Award-winning filmmaker Mike Schultz of Renshaw, Minnesota has a wry sense of humor and a clever way of editing a documentary. His films is screened at numerous film festivals, including the prestigious South by Southwest Festival in Austin, Texas. The, the first time I really remember um, being obsessed with the, the way that films are made was on Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. They would run just these like really little documentaries about like we're gonna go to the bottle cap factory today. And those are just like, they're great little films where it's just a, like a selection of shots. Um, you know how Batman has the, um, the trophy room in his bat cave? This is all I could muster. I mean, this is as close as I could come. My, my last movie, Lost Conquest, I uh, had, to, had to buy a lot of Viking props for that. So I've got a lot of those hanging out here. Um, I, I guess, you know, I'm not a gun owner, but I guess if there was some sort of a home invasion situation, maybe some of this would come in handy. Um, this is maybe my favorite movie tie-in ever. It's an inflatable Popeye kite. I don't know of a lot of other Robert Altman movie tie-in products. This is where they put a monument up to saying this is where the stone was found. Okay, so what we do is Take and rub the stick right here. I think Mike is never laughing at someone. There's no cruelty. Uh, he's laughing with them. He, he's a, I think he's a really smart filmmaker. And I think what emerges when he finishes, polishes these documentaries and puts the final touches on the edit, are they're, they're a lot smarter than you would necessarily see on, on the surface. Angela Gibson whose story might be considered typical of the women excluded from the Hollywood Boys Club, were it not for the fact that she produced her films in North Dakota. I was looking through there and I discovered um, there was this woman in the 1920s in Castleton, North Dakota, named Angela Marie Gibson, who just made films kind of for fun and distributed them, them herself. And uh, so I thought she was such an interesting character um, I made a short documentary uh, about her um, when I was in my 20s. Making that Angela Gibson documentary was probably more um, instructive than all of film school. The Wild Bill's Run is um, about a, uh, a guy who led a, a guy from Minnesota who led a snowmobile expedition to the Arctic. It takes a lot more than just plain skill. Thought he would maybe go all the way to Moscow. I don't think he understood how geography works. Um, and so it, it failed. It, it, the expedition didn't make it to Moscow. There were a lot of things that got accomplished, but it's still a failed mission because we didn't get to do what we set out to do. Um, and so I think he had some debts, so he started smuggling drugs, and he actually became one of the top drug smugglers in the country and was on America's 10 most wanted list for a while, and then he just disappeared. Walking through the airport in Minneapolis, carrying a rifle and looking like a wild man from Borneo. <laughs> All of the guys that we interviewed in the film were members of this snowmobile expedition, and um, they, I had a hard time, the first couple times I'd interview these guys, they're so stoic. Does it make you mad? No, <laughs> no. I found it frustrating until I realized that that, that was, that, I mean, that is an answer in and of itself. This sort of, um, the way that these guys of a certain generation from the Midwest, the, the way they, they just sort of look at the world is, is so interesting. And, this is the second year we've brought the puzzle contest back to Winter Carnival. It kind of just took a back seat for a little while and then we had a lot of people calling and emailing and I'm like, what's this jigsaw puzzle contest people are talking about? After making a film about snowmobile criminals, I thought I would make a hard-hitting documentary about competitive jigsaw puzzling. I'm loath to give up wicker kittens, but that's okay. I know, I was a little sad to Wicker see kittens, are so cute. They're so cute. We did this one together, right? No, it was last January. Yeah. Like with wicker kittens, it was yep. hard. I felt like that was the one time when maybe he didn't listen as much because 
you know, I'm in the film, so I definitely had a bias. Um, so I think he kind of, you know, probably weighed that more so when he was making Wicker Kittens to maybe not listen to me <laughs> as much. Obviously, Minnesota Nice comes to mind because I think he does really showcase Minnesotans in a way that, that captures the sort of uniqueness of Minnesotan kind of personalities and attitudes. After Wicker Kittens, where, I, where one of the subjects was my girlfriend, I started to look around and I thought, you know, my mom is really into this Kensington runestone business. If you don't believe, you doubt everything, then you're always living in controversy. I could probably make a film about her and, and, and the, the, the obsession that a lot of people have with the runestone. I, I, just, I just think there's something really interesting about why people believe in things that they believe. My grandfather was one of the first persons to see it. I mean, I, I almost accidentally made a film about religion, but the text is, is about whether or not you believe that Vikings were here in Minnesota. This is the Free Range Film Festival barn. Um, we've been doing the festival here for 13 years. Together with my friends, we just decided, well, let's just build our own movie theater. And um, we did that and started, you know, having the festival and in invited filmmakers and films here that we wouldn't normally get to see. Um, so we, we kind of like to say, you know, if you, if you live out in the country, you just sort of have to make your own fun. She's got to go to Central America and all over. And I like documentary films more than narrative films because I'm just inherently a skeptical person. I, I, I have a hard time suspending disbelief. Um, and so uh, I just get a lot more enjoyment out of w you know, watching documentary not. films. Um, like I could watch a bad documentary and learn a ton of stuff. Uh, style, I just like to look at, at, you know, even serious subjects with just a, a little, a little bit of humor, um, or sometimes a lot of humor. Prairie Mosaic is funded by the Minnesota Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund with money from the vote of the people of Minnesota on November 4th, 2008. The North Dakota Council on the Arts and by the members of Prairie Public.